Yes, let's uh, start with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we give thanks we can meet via Zoom. We ask your Holy Spirit to be with us, to guide us and correct us in our uh, understanding of chronology, where we might be wrong, and to affirm things which are correct and give us new light where need be, that we can uh, be more knowledgeable concerning the beginning of things in this here world. And uh, we know that uh, these things have a relationship to the end of the world as well. And I pray that uh, we can have your character within us to represent you to this here world, to keep your commandments diligently and to um, honor you in all that we do and say, and give the world the, the warning of your soon coming. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So, so Stephen, what we'll do um, is I'll kind of ask you some questions and uh, let you answer them. Um, sort of go through this study a little bit. So first question, because um, you talk about this in the introduction. Now, when did we start working, when did you start working on chronology uh, particularly? Do you know? Um, well, I had done some things in the past, mm -hmm. just the, the basic things. Um, maybe not to the same level uh, as I do now, but yeah. I think your influence uh, with the, the things you were finding. Yeah, back in 2016. Yes. Before that, I think it was kind of very much uh, an amateur. Maybe yeah. I still am an amateur in a sense, but, <laughs> but really, and I'm, I'm better enough as I haven't really a lot of, of a clue about a lot of things. Yeah, and, and I understand because I was in the same boat back in about 2012 when I really started looking at the 2520. Um, and, you know, like a lot of Adventists, we know a little bit about some of these things because, you know, we might know about the 2300 days and 70 weeks. We might have some idea about the Babylonian captivity, though I find that almost nobody understands the Babylonian captivity. And then the real big problem, which was one of the ones that we, we sort of solved, was the chronology of the kings. So that was a major chronology. The 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 chronology from the creation up to the Exodus is is really identical to that of of Usher. So we don't we don't really have any differences there. Uh, Twenty five thirteen a.m. Anno Mundi is the year of the Exodus. That's what Usher has. That's what we have. So it's been really the chronology of the kings of Judah and. Um, and the chronology after the Exodus. So that, that's where um, some of those differences exist. So as you say in the, in the introduction, there's basically 40 years added to Asher. And, and, and that, that becomes a, a pivotal uh, point. Who has their microphone on? I'm not sure who, so looks like a couple of people. It's probably James there, yeah, thanks. Um, so you have a nice outline, um, so you're going to go right, where are you going to start? You got section two up there. Is yeah, that, so the creation that, to the flood. Okay. Okay, so creation to the flood. So section one is, is mostly writing, and you're talking about some of these, uh, issues so, so starting here on section two, creation so can you explain a little bit about what's here okay what so you... in the green in the green here we have the age of the world or on monday okay and then we have the date and this is really based upon your chronology mm -hmm. okay and then we have the blue and the event and then so we have basically the the ages, 
are really the, the main events that are, we are given that we can connect with time mm-hmm. and pre, pre-flood. Uh, there's not much more other than maybe um, when Noah begins to build the ark or when people die, it's, it's, it's other than that is people being born. Mm-hmm. So, and then I just have like here the references. So there's nothing really major just to, uh, that stands out initially mm-hmm. uh, here. So we can kind of just go through this. I have had a few wee pictures here just to, to illustrate things and just to make it a wee bit more attractive. Yeah. Now, now, since this chronology is, there's nothing unusual about how we're doing the chronology of um, the patriarchs. When they when they're born and when they die, so one thing that that um, that I struggled with and I had to work through. We noticed that the chronology is meant to be understood and to be added together. That is, any uh, that is, it's rounded up or rounded down. Because if if you know on average, you know when when a person has a child. You know, you're going to have you're going to be halfway through a year on average when you have a child. So, you know, I've had seven children and um, uh, not personally, but my wife did. Um, and, you know, they're born at different times. So I could say, well, my first son was born when I was 18. But, you know, I was. Um, I guess it would have been like 18 and a half years old, right? So in the Bible, when they're doing this, this count, they're adjusting for that. They're accommodating that fact already. And if you try to work it out where you, and I tried this initially, I thought, well, you know, there's, you know, um, basically 10 generations or 11 generations to the flood. So I should add about five years, right? If it, if it works out on average, but that's already been done for us. So, so these, so the Bible chronology is meant for us to understand and to be able to do the type of calculations that we're doing. So, so God intended it to be understood the way that we're doing it. Okay. Okay. So with this here also, we can see when someone is born or some event happens, you can see how old the other patriarchs are mm-hmm. as well. So I've accumulated them up. And that's really helpful. Yeah, so I had had a, a table where it just was kind of the, you know, each, each when they're born, um, you know, and how old the father was, kind of like the Bible has it. But here we can compare the, the, the math is being done with uh, for us between the different uh, patriarchs. So we can see how long a patriarch is living um, and how many patriarchs are alive when someone is is born? So you can see the overlap there. Yes. So I don't have it in this here, but I did have uh, recognize that um, you have when the difference between is it. Uh, when Adam dies, yes, that's it. In progress. When Adam dies and Seth dies, you have 18 years. And then when uh, Enos is the next one to die, and then there's seven years between Enos and Seth. Mm-hmm. So you have that one eight and a seven straight away. Okay. And the first people who died. In the Bible, so we have that symbol of July 18. Pretty okay. much. Yeah. So those are the first two of this list that die, right? That is, we don't have um, Abel's. First, yeah, first three. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but we don't have Abel's age. So no. We don't know how old he was when he died or anything like that. The, the Bible doesn't give us that. But you're saying you're taking when Adam dies. When um, Seth dies, and then when who dies? 
Enos. Enos. So that's going to be, those are the first three that were given an age when they die. And it's 18 years and seven years. Yes. So 187, which is this symbol. Mm -hmm. Now, what about when the next one dies? It's not 20, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think it is. Um, Kianan. So it's actually going to be five years, actually, more. Okay. So you can maybe have 1,800 days as a prophetic symbol. Yeah. There. And then uh, Malahil, Malalil dies. So you have, uh, that's uh, 15 years. So that would be 55,400 days. As a symbol. Okay. So prophetic days, prophetic days between, you know. Oh, so prophetic days, you're just taking like times 360. Yes. Okay. I'll be right now, maybe be 45, sorry. Maybe okay. I'm half a, maybe I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> okay, so, so I'm just going to do it on a calculator. So explain again what you're doing there. So uh, 15 times 360. Maybe I'm right. It's 5,400, yeah. Yeah, 5,400. Yeah. Prophetic days. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> um, so then we have a lot of them dying off there. And then we have just a few patriarchs then when it comes to no building the ark. Mm -hmm. And we can see later on, there's this year date, there's a lot of uh, uh, spans of time which connects to dates that can be anchored from this year time. Yeah, and, and that's really an important point too. Um, now, I had tried some of this stuff that, that you have done with these this chronology. I had tried it before I really understood the chronology properly. Um, and and I never thought of turning spans of times into dates, which is one of the things you have and connecting things in the way that you did. But um, I noticed that there were some things there that, that, that you did eventually notice. I noticed some of them, but, but this 120 years before the flood becomes an important date. It is. So then we have, the flood, Methuselah, you can see that he's, he dies just in the same year. Yeah. And then uh, Noah, Japheth, and Shem. We have their ages. We don't have the age of Ham when he enters the ark. No. The flood takes place. So I have another diagram we put together as well. I just added the, the accumulated age of the patriarchs. Sometimes you go into, uh, there's maybe some people um, say about five old ladies or something in a room and they would say something like the total ages here is 500 years or so. You know, you just add up all the ladies, there's 500 years of life all out in this room. So this is a kind of just uh, putting together the years of life. Yeah, it's just like... like yeah, last year, Heidi and I turned 100. Um, <laughs> yeah. Right, so that type of thing, is that what you're talking about? Yes, yes. So uh, I just thought, just for curiosity's sake, just to have that um, accumulated age. Here's a little so, so I have spelled total wrong here, so. Is it kind of like a running total then? No, it's just taking um, Adam, how old he was when his son was born, and Seth, oh. and adding them together. So you get a much larger number for the whole span of time. Okay. And what did you find in the significance of that? It's just more curiosity that you didn't notice anything? Or... Yeah, nothing major. Um, I did find when you, you added these here, um, the the increase, yeah, you know, from when someone is born, um, the accumulated ages increase. Um, you you do get the number two five 
12. So which, which to me is like a symbol of uh, December 25th. I think it's actually when it comes to Enoch being born or something. I think it's maybe, uh, if you add up from here, maybe so, uh, one of them. Yeah, so, but apart from that, I haven't really, I, would, I, would, I haven't really seen anything there to put a lot of weight on it. But I, I just saw more just done it, just maybe they could find some things in the future from that there, I'm not sure. If you check Something the chat comes. there, Stephen, you can see uh, there's a nice 2520 in there from uh, Methuselah to Enosh. When you add those, those ones up, I think there's six ages that you add up there. Okay. In, in the chat, if you look at the chat, um, the year uh, 3372 BC, the year Lamech was born. And then Methuselah was 187. And then from Methuselah to Enosh, those six people, if you add them up, it's a 2520. Okay. So if, sorry, say it again, if you add. Yeah, so if you go from, um, it's in the chat there too. Uh, if you right, go from Methuselah, when, uh, in the chat here in, in our group uh, on the Zoom, yeah, if you look at the, uh, so if you go from Methuselah was 187 and then en Enoch was 252 and Jared 414 and Ahalel was 479, Keenan 549 and Enosh 639. Yeah, so when what you add up those six, you get a 2520. All yes, right, okay. So he's taking that column um, that you have in on. Uh, page five and you're starting with lamex age and it's it, it goes from the bottom up but 187 252 414 mm. yeah uh, that's it that's it there it is yeah six six of them and that's a 25 20. okay yeah. and did you do anything with these here the, uh the, was that set that was adam right seth and adam yes there's there's a whole study on that um i didn't post that but if you do, if you look at just Seth and Adam alone, uh, is interesting. If you add 744 plus 874, do you have those same two numbers? I'm just looking at my study. Fibonacci. Okay, so yeah, Fibonacci's uh, number comes in there, the 1618. Mm -hmm. And then you can look at Matthew 1618 about Peter and the, the rock and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And then it kind of pulls out Fibonacci with phi, the number phi, the 1.618. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, Thanks for letting me share that. Yeah. So so what we're saying is when Lamech is born, um, we can take uh, all of these, these ages, right? And uh, we can then uh, add them up to where was it? yeah so all in so the year that lay makes born creates this uh 250 and the fibonacci sequence 1618 mm -hmm. yeah amen yeah from 187 to 639 those in that column those six people that that uh, 2520 pops up there okay okay thank you for that yeah yeah, so you're going to have to make a note of that in your paper, Stephen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so. Yeah, please do. Amen. Yeah. Um, just have something there about the Septuagint, and then I'm just noting Peter Arts and Prophets about when the Garden of Eden was removed from the flood. So prophetically, uh, we recognize that there's 1,000 656 years from the creation to the flood. Or not mm. prophetically, there is as much as there is. But um, in prophetic days, uh, there's a period of 46 years from 1798 to 1844, which is out there number 1656, but times 10. So I have these here lined up and I've just, I've just noticing like a, a pattern 
when we line these here up, we have the seven days of creation in the beginning. And for, to 1798, uh, we have the seven times mm -hmm. coming to their uh, conclusion for Northern Israel. And then at the end of that period, we have the shut door and the flood. And I'm paralleling out with the shut door on October 22nd, 1844. And then you have seven days until the flood. And I'm paralleling out with the Sabbath being present truth, noting out just the seven. And then we have the overflowing scourge, which is another name for the Sunday law, which connects with the flood. So that's just a, a pattern that I have a rec, a sort of a thought could parallel. <clears throat> yeah, and, and we also had a connection in our understanding of the lines that we can connect um, our Sunday law to the flood as well, right? So our flooding, Sunday law, the overflowing scourge in that candlestick, right? Of the cosmic line. Yes. <clears throat> so, so there's many different ways we can connect it. Now, so the significance of something like this, somebody, you know, watching this is, you know, is gonna say, well, this is, you know, pretty bizarre because we're sort of going, um, we, we, we understand a lot of things already. And these, these are not how we produce these dates. That is, we, we don't, the dates are what we find in scripture. It's just basically an analysis. That's, that's what you're doing. You're anal an, analyzing the structure of things we already understand to be true. And yes. see the mathematical pattern that God has used were key. And, and this was done long, long ago. I mean, we started doing this. Uh, <coughs> doesn't the, uh, it's become more developed. Uh, doesn't the prophetic, I mean, the time here uh, solidify the way marks? Does it help confirm them? Or uh, yeah, confirm and solidify, confirm, yeah. Yeah, it, it helps solidify them. But, but we definitely don't produce them this way. No. Right, right, and no, I, is, yeah, because some way marks. Yeah, because an example of this, you know, sometimes we have what I call, you know, you got secondary support and tertiary support for something. So, for instance, the forty-six years between seventeen ninety-eight and eighteen forty-four. You know, this is something that's established in the prophetic mirror. It's something that's historically true. Um, and then Jeff would talk about, you know, the forty-six years for the building of the temple. And then that there's 46 chromosomes in the human genome. And, and some people would just take that, well, their whole argument is based on 46 chromosomes in the human genome, you know, that this is the, the building of the temple. And of course, that's just, just a little minor point. We never based anything on it. We didn't come to that conclusion based upon that. We had already come to understand that the period from 1798 to 1844 is the building of a temple. Right, so the same types of things here. We can look at these numbers of days in a prophetic symbol. And what this does is it gives us uh, an analytical tool that we can apply to other things. So we start to see that these don't just happen in this one instance. We find again and again, uh, things that are already connected, we already understand they're connected, but we can analyze them and find the same sort of patterns. So uh, that, that to me is the important part there. Okay, so I have added uh, something that we've kind of recognized fairly recently. So we had Methuselah 187 and then we had Lamech being born, 777 years. And then we have 1800 days to the flood. And you can maybe even add like the seven days there. So you have maybe like another. 187. Uh, yeah, you can maybe even add that there. Yeah, you so need you could have you that. Yeah, you need to add that in there. Lamech is the 
father of my wife. <laughs> yeah, sure, I should have maybe just maybe 1800 days of the shut door and then yeah. seven yeah. days of the flood. Yeah. So, um, yeah. But I'm tying this here and um, just with what we discovered recently with uh, Trump. Yeah. And uh, so I had been a wee bit more just credit to uh, one of the the brothers in the uh, FFA Army and Banners chat group. Okay. Uh, I think it was Robert Armiyana, um, Ayama, yeah, Amanya, I think that's his name. So I didn't. Uh, but uh, he had 1800 days. He was actually beginning it from when Jeff began to present Panium to when Trump was doing something here around the 19th of December. I've seen that 1800 days. I just recognize that, okay, from Trump's inauguration, it's going to be near enough taking you to 25th of December. Mm -hmm. And it turned out, yeah, exactly. And we have here Trump being like a symbol of a 777 mm -hmm. and his age. And then December 25th, we have accumulation of a 777. And when I've done this here, I wasn't aware of Colin's presentation. Okay. And uh, it was only after that I seen his presentation that I thought this could be quite significant. And it's kind of, uh, to me, it's, it's sort of showing that uh, Trump is still part of the prophetic picture. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that as the day that Colin was identifying Trump as potentially being the next president, that we have this here line of uh, 18 and 7, in a sense, uh, yeah. combining. And uh, we already had recognized that uh, he, Trump was typifying Xerxes. Mm -hmm. And we had these here years of Xerxes lining up with Trump presidency. And the third year of Xerxes, there was a 180 day feast that takes you to July 18 on a seven day feast. So uh, to me, I just thought these, these here structures uh, were, were telling us something. Yeah, and now, now the part of the problem here, and, and I wouldn't say it's necessarily a problem, but we already have established all of these waymarks. And then we, we do an analysis like this. But, but the question is, what does it actually mean um, is, is quite another issue. Now, you know, my view is that our line ends chronologically on December 25th, 2021, and that we're not going to time set. And, and we could see that we've never been able to time set accurately. That is, we have the time is correct, but we haven't been able to understand the events. And we still need to measure the time that is as we go through pass through history we're going to start to recognize dates popping up on with events in world history and we'll see how they fit to the structure we already have but we're not we're not going to project a date in the future and say something's going to happen on such and such a date but also we know that our line is typical so you know the december 25th date it ties us to uh Jehoiachin being taken out of prison. It also ties us to the story of Ezra, chapter 10, on the 20th day of the ninth month, because that's the biblical date on December 25th, 2021. And that Trump is connected to this history. He's part of our line. But we, we couldn't say from this that Colin is correct that Trump's going to be resurrected, right? That he's going to be the eighth of the seven that wouldn't follow even though we have this structure we always have to be careful that we understand it correctly because the numbers are correct the dates are correct um, the analysis is correct but the interpretation of it can be varied and people are making some i would say wild interpretations based on some of the chronology that we've established and, 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 and making predictions. So we still have some of that, which from my point of view, it's just gonna fail. So, but, but this is correct. This, 
you know, we have to say everything here just confirms what we already know, but it doesn't tell us about the future. I think it would support Colin's argument, but I'm not, I'm, I'm still in a position to say, well, let's wait and see. Yeah. And, and because we have a lot, well, yeah, I would say that it, it supports it if you ignore the fact that our line is typical. Because with Colin's argument, he's looking for the actual national Sunday law to come fairly soon based upon that Trump is going to once again retain power. And that's going to be the Battle of Paneum. And, and I don't think that, that anything that he's doing really supports that. I don't, did you watch the study from last night, Stephen? Yes. Okay. So you can see where I'm coming from there. There's a lot of work that needs to be done before we draw a, a conclusion like Trump's going to become the president again. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But I think it's certainly worth looking into. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. We're not going to just ignore it. <laughs> yes. So that's me done with that section. So I'll share the next section. Yep. So, leaving the Ark onto the entering of Canaan. So, uh, this picture of the Ark, the animals leaving the Ark, it's uh, not accurate. It has like the rainbow. So, you're looking at the sun. Normally, the, the rainbow would be the other side of your. <laughs> so, but. Uh, it's just a minor point, but I just thought it was a nice picture. Um, yeah, so just again, same thing with the ages. Um, we, we're recognizing that people now are being born a lot younger and they're not going to be living as old. Mm -hmm. Well, so yeah, and, and one really little thing, um, just going back, go back up. So we do see. Uh, that Japheth ends up being the firstborn. Right, and Shem, um, Shem is going to be two years after Japheth. And that's that's established by that chronology, dealing with the, their ages at the flood. So, so when we go back to, uh, you know, he has Shem, Ham, and Japheth, when Noah has Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Shem is mentioned first, but he's not the firstborn. And and that will go later to when we deal with uh, Abraham. Um, um, Hera, or, or Haran and Nahor. Yeah, Haran, yeah, and Haran and Nahor. And again, Abraham's going to be mentioned first, even though he's not the firstborn. So it's just a precedent there. So some of these little details, because I run into people all the time. <laughs> on the internet who are doing biblical chronology. Um, and people often write me too, and, and they have problems with my chronology and they will uh, not notice some of these little details. So, you know, these are things that it, it takes time to get all these little details sorted out. It, it's nice to have something like this that's helpful. And, and you do have some of the Bible verses and, and also explanations for some of these problems. There's a few that I want to, you know, add to your paper as suggestions to, just to explain some things in a bit more detail as footnotes or, or whatever. But um, it, it's, it, it's pretty clear once you put this here, lay this out, the different ages, um, it, it, it's more visual for people. Okay, just noticing that it's 100 years when Peleg is born, from when Noah and his family leave the ark. Yeah. So you have Peleg being mentioned that uh, tells us that in his days was the earth divided. Yeah. So I'm just wondering, do you have any, so I think I've heard some people say that this is when the continents 
the waters were kind of lowered, or so the ice caps were initially after the flood, so you yeah. could walk across the lands. But then after the ice caps, well, that then the earth was divided. Yeah. So um, what you're going to have, I mean, this is sort of speculative things. We know that the flood covers the earth. I mean, we don't know how high the mountains were originally, uh, but part of the things with the flood is there's obviously, a, there has to be, when it says the fountains of the great deep are broken up, um, there has to be some kind of water under the earth that comes up onto the top of the earth and, and the land must sink in some way. Um, that's the only thing that I can understand by that. Um, so, so you're going to have some land going down, some land going up during the time that the, that, uh, the earth is underwater. And then of course the water is going to recede. Um, but you would still have ice caps. Um, now how long that takes for those ice caps and, and what happens, it, there's all kinds of speculations, but um, as far as the division, so there's basically two different views. One has to do with the dividing of the language that it occurs in his age, his time, and another one that it's um, uh, the dividing of the land. So, so it's hard to say what the earth divided means. But yeah, I, I don't, I don't have a solid answer on that. I don't know, but yeah, you run into lots of different theories. And, and and when I can't prove something, I tend not to to make too much of it. Okay, so this is just lots of ages, um, nothing really. Well, well, you do have the thing with Terra. If you go back up there, Terra's age. Um, when when Abram's born, right? So some people will say. Because it says Terra had um, um, Abraham, uh, Nahor, and Haran when he was 70, then they think they, they miss out on those periods of years. They take uh, 60 years out of the list, right? Mm -hmm. Because Terra is actually 130 when Abram's born. And so yes. that. So I've seen people who try to shorten the chronology because we still have people, you know, back in the 19, 1980s, there were people who were trying to mark when the 6,000 years ended. And, and that still continues all through the 80s and the 90s and into the 2000s and even today. And what they keep doing is they find ways to shorten the chronology of the earth so they can have uh, – next year or the year after uh, be the year that Jesus is going to come back. Uh, but this is one of the places where people shorten it. So. Okay, so we have there Noah dying just before Abraham, Abraham was born, two years. And then um, Sarah, so forth. And then uh, we're not told about how long Japheth lived, but he had seven sons after the flood, so we can take it that he lived at least seven years, but uh, probably a lot longer. Probably longer. Yeah. Now, of course, we're not given, we're given the ages mostly for the line of Christ. Mm -hmm. That that's the purpose of the chronology in the Bible, is to follow the promise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Terah dies, uh, Abram's brother, Ram. He, he had died. He was the first one, that I think, uh, apart from Abel, that dies before his father. Mm -hmm. I think that's the first one, maybe probably naturally. Um, yeah. So there we have Solomon and Gomorrah. 
and then we have a, a structure that I recognized from this here. Mm -hmm. So it's 99 years till when Noah and his family leave the ark and Shem. So the flood is actually when Shem is 98, mm -hmm. when he comes out of, of the ark and to an earth that had been destroyed. He's 99 years and then it's a one year until Orphaxad is born. And then it's a 350 year time period till when Abram is born. And we're gonna have 99 years then until Sodom and Gomorrah. And then it's the year after that, that Isaac is born. And you have in each occasion, I just noted that there's less than 10 saved. And it's a 450 year span from when they leave the ark until Sodom and Gomorrah. And then 450 years from Shem to Abram being born. And from Orphax up being born to Isaac. And then yeah, you have there the hundred years as well um, of Shem and Abram having their first son. Okay. Now, just with uh, Sodom and Gomorrah being destroyed, um, it's Genesis seventeen. Um, nineteen. Nineteen. Okay. So okay, but you have starting with Genesis seventeen, you have. Uh, the covenant of circumcision, Isaac births promised. Um, but it isn't his, so, and then God rescues Lot. So how do you date it exactly is what I'm, I guess I'm trying to ask. How do you, how do you know it's a year? I mean. Well, you just add up the ages of patriarchs. There you have that promise there of Abram. Yeah. So he tells us there he's 99. And you've got the references there, Genesis 17. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. So yeah, he's 99 when Isaac is promised. Yes. And then, um, so Sodom and Gomorrah is then destroyed. When he's in, that, 99. in that year. Yes, so but basically soon afterwards, you have Christ and the two angels visiting him. Okay. Um, and then the promise of Isaac. So this is uh, so he's going to be a hundred years old okay. when he begat yep. Isaac. So. Okay. Yeah, I had just never thought that through before. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, so it's an interesting structure then as well. Mm -hmm. Now yes. you have, of course, this 450 years um, worked into that in three different spans. That's just because of the 100 years on either side. Any, any significance in the symbols here? You haven't just just we have you know the 350 the 450s but we yeah, have we had yeah we had connected the Josiah to the 350 okay so but I don't see any connection this here okay other than it's a sort of a you can round it off to like a decade yeah okay Okay. So we're moving on to Isaac and we have here, it's uh, Isaac's five years old when he's being weaned and walked by Ishmael. And Ishmael would, is 19 at that their time. And we have a time prophecy of 400 years begin. And then, uh, it's then 20 years is due to, uh, we don't get it in the Bible, but Peter Oaks and Prophets tells mm -hmm. us that uh, Isaac is 20 years old. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, just note it there. 400 years end with the Exodus in 1533 BC. Prophetically, 400 years represents uh, 144,000 days. So, okay. So it's just, uh, Then Shem dies when um, Abraham's 150. So that's uh, so he was Isaac was 50. So he lived 600 years. He was the longest that lived after the flood that had been through it. Mm -hmm. And there's like a, a wee diagram here. We can find it for when Noah was born. There's 502 years to when Shem was born. And then there's 600 years that Shem dies. That's how he lives. And then Noah was 600 years until the flood. We have many years there in between, which is uh, two times 49. Uh, two jubilees. Now the significance of 502, there's... What was the significance of 502? There was yeah, some... so if you, um, 502 prophetic years, if you multiply it by 360, okay. you have. Yeah, uh, 180720. 180,7720, yeah. which is also the same number of, of years or days. If you add up the years of patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac and uh, Jacob. Their total years is 502. So it's, okay. it's the same. Okay. I can maybe make a note of that. I think I maybe have it in here somewhere. Maybe yeah, I haven't. have a note of it in there. Yeah. Okay, so we're moving on to Jacob and um, We've covered this before. He's 77 when he begins to serve seven years for Laban. Mari's at 84. And then that's uh, this allows you to see the ages for that there. But I, I notice here that uh, from when Adam was created to the birth of Seth. He's 130, and then it's 1748 years to when Terah is born. And Terah lives 130 years when Abram is born. And uh, just notice that when Jacob was born, it's 130 years then to when he joined with uh, Joseph. And that was in the year 1748 BC. Yeah, so that's the... Uh, that's the center of the 450 year chiasm that has 215 years on either side. So, that's correct. Yes. So, and, and it's just the, the coincidence of this, noticing this 130 years and then seeing this center date of the chiasm and recognizing that it becomes this center date or center span of time. Um, between these two periods, these Adam to Seth and Terah to Abram. Uh, it, it confirms the unlikeliness of this, confirms the chronology that we have um, from the Exodus onward. Right, because we're gonna have lots of these types of things occur, correct? Yes. But the years BC are connected to spans of time. Okay, so that's just to cover the structure of uh, chiasm of Joseph. So we, we think we've covered that before. Um, but what we've, we have covered it before, but it, it's always good to go over it for somebody watching this, um, you know, who may not be as familiar with it. Mm -hmm. So just explain that structure in the life of Joseph. Okay, so he's 17 years 
Canaan mm -hmm. with his father. And then he sold as a slave into Egypt. And he's there for 11 years until he interprets the dreams of the butler and beggar. But he's still there for another two years. And then he's made second to Pharaoh and there's seven years of plenty. And then it's two years after that, then he uh, meets his brothers. And there's a story there where eventually Jacob is brought down to Egypt. And they're going to be there for another 17 years. But it was, uh, yeah, it was 11 years then they were, uh, I'm sorry, a total of 22 years then it was uh, separated. They were separated, uh, Joseph and Jacob. <coughs> um, 11 years, this can be divided by 11 years out either side. And um, then he's going to live with Jacob now in, in Egypt for 17 years before Jacob dies. And 17 times 11 is 187. Mm -hmm. So this is a number that comes up quite a lot. Um, so I have here the, uh, when Moses is born, I think I have this here in the structure, but we'll see that it's 777 years from the flood until when Moses was born. Okay. And uh, you can see here, um, so when Joseph dies, I worked out, uh, after this date, there arose a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. The decree to kill all the male children occurred after the birth of Aaron mm -hmm. and before the birth of Moses. Mm -hmm. So I reckon that's a period of between 61 and 64 years from when Joseph died until that decree to to drown all the, the children okay. of, the, of the males. Yeah, so Joseph dies and it's going to be over 60 years until that uh, uh, that story that parallels the, the slaughter of the innocents in, in the time of Christ as well. Um, so that you're going to have these mm -hmm. babies. Okay, yes. so. Just uh, recognizing the, um, another thing about the one seven, the ages of the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that it's uh, 175 years, can be calculated as seven times five squared, Isaac, can be calculated as five times six squared, and Jacob, his total age is three times seven squared. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are one of those things where uh, skeptics of the Bible, when they see these things, they they say that the story is is manufactured. Mm -hmm. so they say that these things are done to, uh, you know sort of numerology added to these stories or whatever but uh, there's so many things here that they wouldn't have been able to understand until the present day it's very unlikely that all of this is manufactured by man it's actually impossible but so um we can have another connection between the one eight and the seven sort of like symbolized with the 777 years of Lamech, then we have 1800 days, and then followed by 777 years until the birth of Moses. And, um, there's other structures we can tie in here. There was 120 years then uh, for the building of the ark, and then Moses lives 120 years after that. So we have that 777 years. Uh, being in a, a cinder. And then there was four days from when Noah was born, it was 480 years until they started building the ark. And then from when Moses died, 
verse 180 years, marked in 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 1. So mm. we, we can come to that structure later on, I think. Uh, so then we have 1533, we come down to the Exodus. And I noticed that from the death of Jacob to the death of Joseph, you have 54 years. And then it's 144 years from the death of Joseph to the Exodus. And if you multiply 54 times 144, you get 7776. And we had seen earlier on, well, maybe don't, we didn't really emphasize it, but uh, we have Genesis 31, 41. This is Jacob speaking to Laban. Thus have I been 20 years in thy house. I served thee 14 years for thy two daughters and six years for thy cattle. And we're told that after he married Leah, he says, uh, Laban says to Jacob, fulfill her week, and we will give this also for the service which thou shalt serve with me yet seven other years. So I, I believe this year for filling our week is going to wait another seven days until you can marry Rachel. So we have seven, seven, and seven, followed by six. So I think it's can maybe like a, you can maybe see it as a symbol of this year, 776, <laughs> or so there's not uh, 7,776, maybe uh, you could maybe tie it in. Um, it's also a number that comes up in some of the measurements with Solomon's temple, the porch. If you have like an 18 inch cubit, the area of some of the buildings there is that number. Um, then I'm just noting a quote from Ellen White that she says that uh, we don't have an actual date. But I'm saying that the, these passages indicate that the book of Genesis and the book and Job were written by Moses during his last 13 years. I uh, have a as a shepherd in Midian. Um, and I have that because she says 2,500 years of human history, there was no written revelation. And then she says long years amid the desert solitudes were not lost. Not only was Moses getting a preparation for the great work before him, but during this time, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he wrote the book of Genesis and also the book of Job, which would be read with the deepest interest by the people of God until the close of time. So taking out 25 years is literal. So it's, it's indicating that uh, potentially then within that last 13 years, then he, uh, he writes that, uh, and two books. Yeah. Now, just another thing, though, about that number seven 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 six. I've run into it lots of times. Um, and if you divide it by three hundred and sixty, you get twenty one point six, which is, uh, and as we know, two hundred and sixteen is six times six times six. Um, and then also. If you take six times six times six and you multiply, you get 216. And if you take the number 36, you multiply it by the number 36, which is a shorthand for 666, then you get 7776. So, but I've run into this num number multiple times. I wish I would have written them all down because every time I ran into it, I was like, oh, there's this number again. But I, I don't remember where I found it. So. Yeah. Yeah, it comes up in the temples. There's other yeah. ones as well. Um, I think the most holy place, if you add up all the surface areas of the, the, 
Is it this mm -hmm. cube? Uh, it's also that number. Yeah. Um, so here I've gone into a section where I look at the evidence for 1533 mm -hmm. as being the uh, the date of the Exodus. So do we shall we look into that? Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's ten o'clock your time. So um, if you want to go another half an hour, it probably could do this. Okay. So establishing the year 1533 BC as the date of the Exodus is a key element in this chronology that enables the recognition of date and span correlations. The date is established from working back from the destruction of Jerusalem by Babylon, an event widely acknowledged to date in 586 BC. I think Wikipedia in one place has it as 587. Uh, from this date, there are two witnesses to a prior period of 391 years and six months for the kings of Judah that began when the kingdom was divided soon after Solomon's death. This period would therefore begin in 977 BC. One witness for this period is for matting up the dates of the kings while taking account of a two year co regency during the reign of Jehoshaphat. The other witness is the 390 years to the siege of Jerusalem early in 587 BC, brought to view in Ezekiel chapter four, verses four to six. Thereafter, there was an 18 month siege to the destruction of the city. First Kings chapter six, verse one, brings to view a period of 480 years after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt to the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel. When he began, when he began to build the house of the Lord, in understanding that Solomon's reign ended in 977 BC, the fourth year of Solomon's 40 year reign would take us to 1013 BC. Therefore, the 480 years would begin in 1493 BC, from which the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt. On a plain reading, the general assumption of this phrase is that it is referring to the year of the Exodus. This was the view of James Usher. But there are problems with this view. And there is another way to interpret this verse in that it can represent a 40 year period of time from the Exodus to the crossing of the River Jordan and entering into the Promised Land. So Psalm 114 verses 1 to 5 is the support for this view. So this says, when Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of a strange language. Judah was his sanctuary and Israel his dominion. The sea sought and fled. Jordan was driven back. The mountains skipped like lambs and the high hills like lambs. What ill thee, O sea, O thou sea, that thou fleddest, thou Jordan, that thou was driven back? So in this psalm, we see the psalmist referring, ref, reference the time when Israel went out of Egypt. To this event is attached the crossing of the Red Sea with the words, the sea saw and fled. But what is also connected with this coming out of Egypt is the crossing of the, river, of the Jordan River in the words, Jordan was driven back. Thus, when Israel went out of Egypt, is here pictured as a 40 year period involving two miraculous events of waters being held back to enable a crossing. Yeah, so just a, a comment on this. So when it talks about this in First Kings, it talks about the going forth of the children of Israel uh, from the land of Egypt. It, it's this word uh, that's translated as went out or going forth. Um, uh, this word, a pretty common Hebrew word. Um, but when you translate some of these words into English, they become a little bit more um, uh, restricted than the actual Hebrew word itself. Um, because the one in First Kings 6, it says, um, it came to pass in the 480th year after the children were come out of the land of Egypt. And uh, this idea is that it's a process of them coming out. Now, it's still the same word, 
Yatsa. It's just translated went out and come out. And that's because Hebrew doesn't have a distinction between here or there, um, uh, between, you know, come and go. Like we have this sort of positional understanding. Uh, Hebrew doesn't have that. So you, you don't have some distinction to, you know, went out or come out. The translator has to provide that when they translate it. Um, these and those, they don't have that distinction. So, so what we see is that this is a process of time from when they leave Egypt to when they cross the Jordan. Jordan, that's, that's when they come out of Egypt. It's not on a single day. Does, does that make sense to people? And so, so this was a, an important point in that it fit in with uh, the chronology that Ellen White has uh, for the children of Amalek. Is that it, Stephen? Before? Yes, we come to that. Yes. Yeah. So, so I have, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so another support for 1533 BC being the year of the Exodus comes from the date that we find in Exodus 16, verse 1. About three weeks after the crossing of the Red Sea, the children of Israel came to the wilderness of, of Sin, wilderness of Sin, <laughs> on the 15th day of the second month. So Exodus 16, verse 1 tells us, and they took their journey from Elam, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came onto the wilderness of Sin, which is in which is between Elam and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month, after depart after their departing out of the land of Egypt. So verse two tells us that the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron, and Aaron in the wilderness. The Lord said he would rain bread from heaven and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day. And that on the sixth day that they shall pre prepare that which they bring in and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. Then on the sixth day, they were told that tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which ye bake, bake that which ye will bake today, and see that ye will seethe, and that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until the morning. So from this we can gauge that the promise of the manna on the 15th day of the second month was a Sabbath, and that the following day when the manna would first fall would be a Sunday. Modern technological developments help to provide the means to identify the days of the week of specific dates in the past. It can therefore be ascertained that in 1533 BC, the biblical 15th day of the second month was indeed the Sabbath and would be a support for this year being that of the Exodus. In 1493 BC or 1492, if the 480 years were to begin in either of these years, the Sabbath would not be the 15th day of the second month. Uh, so that would be like, um, yeah, taking the 480, so that would be the years where Usher or the other people would think about these here um, coming out of Egypt, they would normally apply it to that sort of date. Um, says here, if, if, if 1493 BC was the date of the Exodus, they would not have left Egypt on the Sabbath day. Sorry, they would have left Egypt on the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. So this would be contrary to the principle expressed in Matthew 24 verse 20. Pray ye that your flight be not on the Sabbath day. So I have here the year 1492. And this is the 15th day of the second month. And it's a Friday. So it wouldn't be a Sabbath. And on the 1493 BC, it's a Monday. And here, you can see that in 1533 BC, uh, it uh, matches in being a Sabbath. 
Uh, in last year's reckoning, the year of the Exodus was 1491 BC. The weekday of the 15th day of the second month in that year was a Wednesday. So further emphasis for 1533 BC as the date of the Exodus will be highlighted in other sections as relevant points arise. So I don't have it here. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's, it's only when I come to the chronology of the, the Saul. Yeah. That they then bring out that aspect of the Elamite quote that supports 1533. Yeah, and, and I've said many times, this was a difficult for me to accept this um, because, you know, to depart from Usher in that way, uh, it, it took me a couple of years to be settled on it once I first uh, looked at the problem and, and probably even longer than that. I don't think I was finally 100% settled until the work that you did um, when we, and this would have been probably in 2019 or 2020, when we sort of emailed back and forth about it. So, uh, and then of course, okay. yeah, so it would have been, and, and especially when you got the 1,533 days. Uh, from August 11th, 1840 to October 22nd, 1844. I think that was the thing that finally nailed it for me. So. Okay. So we have here the, the 430 year chiasm. chiasm. Um, we find this in, as Exodus. I think there's a, I think I have it here somewhere No. Um, okay, so this is just uh, initially showing that the 430 years, I have the quote here, Exodus 12, verse 40, now, it's a, now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years, and it came to pass at the end of 430 years, even the selfsame day, it came to pass that all the hosts of the Lord went out of the land of Egypt. And it's also mentioned there in Galatians, uh, chapter 3, verse 17. Um, so that the midpoint is uh, we can see that there's 215 years when the God's people were sojourning in the land of Canaan from when Abraham left Haran. And then you have Jacob and Joseph uniting, and therefore the next 215 years uh, they're in uh, Egypt until the Exodus. They come out in 1533. That mentions uh, 400 years. This is the second time prophecy brought the view in scripture. And you can maybe argue that there's 6,000 years of uh, sort of uh, the life of the earth, whatever, of sin, and then a thousand years. I'm just excluding that, but this is like after you have the 120 years of building the ark. And then this the next one's. The 400 years we find in Genesis 15, verse 13. And so we ask, connect it from when Isaac is mocked to the Exodus. And so there's, there's time structures we'll see later on <clears throat> that connects these here to uh, spans of time. Uh, I think this one here, there's a 457, 457 years. Uh, I don't know if I might have it. Maybe no, I don't have it in this one. But I think it's when we, when we come to the end of later on, we can see that there, where that 457 years takes you to, to and there's a connection. Um, actually, it takes you to 1933. Right, you'll have that date further up. So yeah, ties it to weaning. So that is uh, maybe it's four hundred fifty-seven years. <laughs> so maybe confused. Yeah. Okay. So that's nineteen hundred thirty-three. That's the year it begins at nineteen thirty-three BC through the Exodus. Um, but there's uh, yeah, there's four hundred four hundred fifty-seven years then. Yeah. It connects to that, to another event. Well, it comes out in the future. I'm getting a wee bit confused here. 
So um, then we have the tabernacle being dedicated the year after the Exodus. Yeah. Now, when it comes to that, I've 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 decided. But so you know, I I'm not the expert, but I'm pretty sure that the dedication actually happens. Um, prior to the completion of the temple, not a year later. And um, the tabernacle. Oh, oh no. Oh, this is the tabernacle. Never mind. I'm I'm thinking wrong. Okay, <laughs> that's it. I, I'm I'm way over in uh, the story of Saul. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So this is yeah, the dedication of the tabernacle is five fourteen, you're correct. Okay, so we have in that year then Nadab and Bahayu, Abihu, being offered strange fire and being destroyed, and then the spying of the, the land of Canaan uh, taking place a few months after that, and then rebellion of Korah, then began their forty years sojourning in the wilderness. Yeah, is it is it the spying of the land of Canaan in fifteen thirty one? Isn't it, aren't they in the land for 30, isn't it in the second year or two years after they left Egypt that, or am I thinking well, something? No, they, they, yeah, they, they, they leave in the, um, they're in Sinai just, I think just under a year. Yeah. Okay, I think it says they leave on the 20th day of the second month. Okay. Okay, and so they're gonna go, to uh, Kadesh Barnea. Yeah. And it's, uh, there's 11 days. It's an 11 day journey. Okay. It says there, I think it identifies, although I think it, uh, there's a, something about that chronology that within them 11 days, or I think maybe it's not counting them. You know, it's, uh, maybe it's just applying to 11 days of travel to, to Kadesh Barnea. The borders of Canaan, but then within that there they have a week where they have to wait until Miriam uh, recovers from leprosy. Yeah. Where she. Uh, okay. And then uh, so that's in that, that year. So I think yeah. that time period. So so that there thereafter, they have eleven days or whatever it is, a bit maybe a bit more. Uh, say say it's. 20 days to get the Kodesh Barnea, and then they're going to spy out the land for 40 days. So you're not, it's not going to be on the next year. It's going to, I know, I know we identify it as like 38 years. Yeah. But it's really like 38 and a half. Or even, or so. even more than 38 and a half. So we just say because it's in the second year. Yes. From an ordinal count, then there's 38 years more, but it's really almost, it's closer to 39 than 38. Okay. Oh, it would be, yes, it would be. So the year before they cross the Jordan, we have Miriam and Aaron dying, and Eleazar becomes priest, and Moses strikes the rock. Mm -hmm. Then 1493, Moses delivers a sermon, and that's on the 11th month, and then he would die. Um, soon after, probably sometime that 11th month, Joshua replaces Moses, and then they have like a Passover uh, as well. They cross on the 10th day of the first month, mm -hmm. and then Jericho and Ai is destroyed. So, <clears throat> the ceasing of the manna, the children of Israel cross the Jordan on the 10th day of the first month and encamped in Gilgal in the east of the border of Jericho. After circumcising all the people, they kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month at the plains, in the plains of Jericho. As with the date of the crucifixion of Christ, this Passover was from Thursday evening to sunset on Friday. The manna would have fell on that Friday morning with the people collecting an amount for that day and the following Sabbath. Um, so and then you have, so that would be the last day 
that the, the man of them will stop. Basically, um, on that Friday, that's my understanding. So that would be 1493 BC, you have the Nissan 14. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the mana stops basically at the end of the week. It doesn't go stop like on, a, on, a, on the first day. Yeah. And that makes sense though. Um, so, so do you know how many days the mana uh, had fallen? Had you figured that out? I've done a lot. Yeah. I'm not too sure whether I included it here. I have it wrote down somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Now, I, worked out, I worked out how many days there was, but it didn't fall, how many yeah. days it did fall, and all that stuff. Yeah, I remember you doing that. But uh, okay, so just a couple of things, because I, I don't want to go too much further in the paper today, but I want to go back to the points. I think I was okay. There's not much more anyway. Um, yeah. So just another thing about Aaron's death. Okay. He, he died. The Gregorian calendar on the 15th of August. Mm -hmm. And he died on the first day of the fifth month. And we know that in 1844, uh, the, the first day of the fifth month was the 15th okay. of August in the Gregorian calendar as well. So it just connects with Samuel Snow and the Midnight Cry. Yeah. So, and, and, yeah. so good. So that that's. Uh, and this is the thing that's very interesting. So when we, when you look at other people who are going to go through the chronology of the Exodus and so forth, um, you're going to be hard pressed to any to find anybody who's going to address the days of the week. That is, people just don't do this. Um, uh, but it, it's an extremely important point. And when we when we look at Asher, Asher. Um, doesn't address the days of the week um, for his exodus either. Now, Usher has a real problem because he teaches that there's a 360 day calendar with 30 day months and that they add five or six days um, at the end of the year, similar to the Egyptian calendar, except that it, it gets lined up with the solar year by sometimes adding a sixth day. Uh, six days, so an extra day. And so he doesn't have that problem. I mean, he, he doesn't have to figure out which day of the week, at least he shouldn't have to, except that he believes that it's the, that the first day, like that you're counting these 30 day months, uh, starting in the fall prior to the Exodus, and that they're going to switch it to the spring at the time of the Exodus. So they would, he would attach it then to the spring equinox. And, but his calendar doesn't work for the date for the year that he gives, if I understand his calendar correctly. So, so Usher doesn't try to reconcile this problem because he, he has 1491 for the Exodus. Um, so, so these are the types of things that, you know, as we've, we've spent years basically working out a lot more detail than anyone has ever done when it comes to this whole biblical chronology and the things that we find fall into place again and again and again so that becomes uh to me an extremely important point that shows the veracity of of how we've approached this and, and the basic premise that we've worked on is that um, that the Bible is true and, and that, that there's no contradictions in God's word. And, and in doing so, we've just found this remarkable consistency. Um, now, there are some things that were difficult puzzles to work out, but once we worked them out, we found that they confirmed other things again and again. Correct? That's what you found, Stephen? Yes. Just with the spans and dates and all that type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So so just to, to um, just to address uh, 1491 BC, um, 
Usher would have the first day of the first month be be on a Sabbath in um, in April. So it'd be April fourth because that's going to be uh, the first day after the spring equinox. Is how he understands that. And so then he's going to have to count 30 days and uh, that 30 days is going to bring him to a Monday being the first day of the second month. And then he's going to have a Monday being the 15th day of the second month. So, so for, and that's in 1491, because that's the year that Usher uses, but it just doesn't work out with the days of the week. Um, okay, I think I said Wednesday. I might have to change that. No, no, you don't have to change it. I'm just saying he's using a different calendar. So, All right, okay. Usher did not believe that the Jews used the lunar solar calendar that that uh, we see in the time of Christ. That they actually adopted that calendar during the Babylonian captivity. So Usher teaches that they had a 365 or 366 day calendar that had 12 30 day months with five or six days at the end of the year. And that it's going to start at the spring equinox as being the first day of the first month. Um, before that, it's going to be the fall equinox that starts the year. So that's how Usher dealt with it. But he doesn't address the day of the year um, when it comes to the manna. He doesn't. He just doesn't look at that. But he does with the creation of the world because he wants the world to be created on um, on the on on the day of the fall equinox because he believes that the that the and that's going to be the evening of October twenty second, four o four B C. So. So when it comes to Usher uh, dealing with the days of the week, he only does it really in that time period and also, of course, at the crucifixion. But, but those are the kinds of problems you run into if you don't take enough time uh, to work out the detail. And, and this is something that we, we have done, but it's not, it's not been an easy task. Uh, there's a lot of... Uh, a lot... A lot of things that have to be figured out. And um, so when I look at 404 BC, Usher's going to start um, the creation of the world at, um, I got to see here if I'm in the right spot. So, yeah, so he's going to have uh, the day of the equinox. Oh, so I, I think I, I think it's actually ends up being a Tuesday in with his calendar in because he takes the day of the equinox, which happens to be a Saturday. No, yeah, that's right, a Saturday. No, so that was right. So it is a Monday. But uh, here, can I just share my screen here just so people see what I'm looking at? So what I have here, whether you can see it well or not, uh, this is the creation of the world. This is the date that Usher gives for the first day of creation is going to be the 23rd day of October. And, and you can see, maybe you can't, but in just orange here, it says uh, FE, which is the fall equinox at, um, and this is Jerusalem time at 7.45 p.m. Um, and so he says, you know, the equinox is going to occur at, um, at the beginning of the creation of the world. And so at sunset on October 20, 22, 4004 BC, that's the first day of creation. So October 23rd is the first full day of creation. And it's going to be a Sunday. And if you look at this calendar here, it has Sunday as the seventh day of the week. But that's actually not the program. There's some kind of glitch going on why this is. It's not supposed to do that. It's supposed to have Saturday. But the days of the week are right for the dates. It's just that it's. It's all shifted over. I even talked to the people at Skyview Cafe and they can't figure out what to do. But anyway, um, but so that's that's one of the few times that Usher does this. And what he does is at the time of the Exodus. So if I go to the Exodus, which is 
um, this is 1491 BC. He's going to uh, he's going to start the year in the spring then, and he's going to start it at the equinox. So he's going to start here. The fourth of April is going to be the first day of the first month. So if you count it through, um, the first day of the second month is going to be the fourth of of May, and and that's going to be a Monday. So the fifteenth day of the second month is going to be a Monday. So so Usher doesn't reconcile that problem, but the thing is we did, um, and and that's one of the reasons I chose uh, fifteen thirty three instead of fifteen thirty two. Um, I mean that's the main reason, because it says in the four hundred eightieth year, and that's an ordinal count, but it, we're using it as a as a cardinal count, which is a long explanation. Okay. Anyway, Stephen, any final thoughts before we close with prayer? Are there any questions? I mean, I know people have been sitting here quietly listening to Stephen and I discussing this, some comments from Brian here. Uh, but there is some things we still have to work out about the Exodus chronology. Um, and that is, do you have in this paper the detailed uh, Exodus chronology that we had done before? No. No. Okay. Because because that's something we will have to do once we get through the general chronology. But um, but people can see how how well laid out this paper is, how easy it is to use, and and to to notice some of these spans of time. Okay. Any any other thoughts by anybody? Stephen, do you have more things to say? Well, we can leave it to next time. Okay. Okay. Well, thanks a lot. Um, can you then close with prayer? Can you close with prayer? Okay, I can. <laughs> okay. Dear Father in heaven, we are so thankful for the Sabbath. Um, for the blessings of fellowship, for the things that we can learn, uh, the conviction that comes to us as we study your word, as we dig deep into your word. We know, Lord, that chronology can look to be a bit superficial to some people. What does this have to do with the cross? But we know, Lord, that it shows your hand and your, your design and your care for the little details, not just of history, but of our personal lives. And we just ask, Lord, that you can continue to come close to each one of us, uh, that we can feel your loving arms around us, that we can hear your voice guiding us, and that we can walk in the light that you have given. Please be with this movement. Be with each person. Uh, help us to do the little things that you've given us to do, in our part in understanding your word. Uh, we pray that you can bring us together again and that you can help us to study these things out for ourselves is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat>